What is going on, everybody? Happy Monday. We are going to be doing a quick showdown slate show. Um, we've got a few interesting, I mean, I think it's a really interesting game and a lot of interesting options. I think it's going to be more spread out than most showdown slates, although we had a really uh, spread out one last week with the Rams. Sheets, any first thoughts on here? And uh, you want to jump right into it? Yeah, so first thoughts is that with the uh, with the uh, return, and we're going to go position by position and players and stuff, but with the return of Mark Andrews, you have um, – you know, between him and Hollywood Brown, you have the two, you have two kind of on the expensive side receivers over there now. So for me, I don't think that it's probably wise to play Lamar. If you're going to play him in captain, I guess, with more than, honestly, with more than even, I would say one, I mean, you could play two wide receivers maybe, but I wouldn't play him with, with, with two really. I think I'm going to try to play him with one, just the idea is that let him get a rushing touchdown and his yards and get a, maybe one guy a passing touchdown or something. I don't know if I'm going to play him with with two. Like last week, I thought it was a really good idea to put him with a couple because they had those real cheap guys there. Mm -hmm. um, that was like my first thing. The other thing I thought about was I, I want to kind of rank these running backs for, for Baltimore. We'll get to that. And the other thought was on Cleveland is, and this is just, you know, kind of a random thought, is that with the uh, with the tight end out, you're going to have um, either Najoku or Harrison Bryant getting that getting that work, and Najoku's one thousand and Bryant's forty two hundred. So um, uh, I think that's an interesting position to, uh, to to consider as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's going to come down to the decisions between some of these potentially cheap options and. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting, though, because you don't need to. You can actually build more middling lineup if you wanted to go that route in this, you know, on in this particular slate. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's funny. My first thoughts, and then I was even thinking about running Boykin back again, but we've got Willie Sneed back now, so it's going to sort of bump those guys down a little. Um, I still don't mind, you know, the one other guy on the cheap range. I, I sort of think du DuVernay is interesting. But maybe we should go by and just talk about the running backs to start it off, because – I do. I, I think you're playing Lamar in almost all your lines. I don't really know how you fade him on this slate, right? Like, I just don't think it makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that's changed is um, is that he's got more competent receivers. So yeah. while his, you know, crap, I don't have anybody open. I got to run. Upside is 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 lowered now. At least he has Andrews back, and he's passing the touchdown upside uh, returns a little bit. So yeah, probably um, a little worse of, as a captain than he was against Dallas last week. But, but still, I mean, he's going to be the most common captain. He still makes a lot of sense. But I don't think it's as much of a you need to play him at a captain spot like, like I felt before because I, I could easily see Andrews getting there. I could see Hollywood Brown getting there. I could see Nick Chubb getting there. I, I, I could see them outscoring him or coming close enough with the price difference to where it might matter. Well, the other thing is that, um, is that, uh, is that him and the captain last week was so easy to get to because of the, the, the uh, receiver value on Baltimore. Right. Where it's not as, as, you know, it's not as easy this week. Right. Right. I, I totally hear that. Um, so what do you, so what do you think of the running backs? I, I have my, I have, I, have, I have some thoughts on this. Yeah. I actually don't mind the idea of taking a shot with Kareem Hunt. We have the ownership project. My really early ownership projections, I feel are a little off. They have Hunt a little low, a little higher than I thought he would be on. Um, but I, I actually like the idea of taking a shot with him here. It sort of allows you to have, you know, more salary to do some things. I think that Chubb is also a phenomenal play. I mean, Chubbs, I think the best game of his career was against this Baltimore team last year. He almost won me a bunch of money because nobody played any running backs against Baltimore last year. And Chubb had, I think, like 190 yards, three touchdowns, something like that. Um, so both Chubb, uh, Chubb and, and Hunt are going to be in my lineups. But I think I might, I might just take the ownership discount and the price discount and play a little bit more Hunt in this spot. And I also think they might be passing coming from behind a little bit more. Uh, I like Baltimore to win this game. And if that's the case, I think you might see Kareem Hunt scripted in a little bit more than usual. Um, when they're playing from ahead and everything, it's so, sort of usually the Chubb show. But when they're down and, and using, you know, throwing the ball out of the backfield, I think you're going to see a little bit more Kareem Hunt. Um, I, I, my, my thoughts on the running backs for the Cleveland side is that I didn't, I didn't want to play both of them. Um, right. I wanted to uh, just make sure that I only played one of them. There, there, there's some times where I could, you know what I mean, where you could do that. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel as though it, on both sides of the ball, um, I, I, I don't want to play two running backs. So whichever, you know, whichever, again, just set a rule or whatever, however you want to handle that. But I would, I would not play Hunt and uh, Chubb together. 
Yeah, I, I get, I get it. I think that, in, I think that you could do it on the showdown slate today, but I don't know that it's the optimal way to go. I actually don't mind it a little bit if, if, if we think that it's going to be a low on combination, but I, I definitely think there are probably better, or more optimal ways to go. One thing that's interesting is that Baker, you know, I know we're talking about running backs, but Baker is not going to be this. Usually, quarterbacks on these slates, you're, you're going to see like 75, 80 percent ownership. That's not going to happen today with Baker. I don't like Baker here, but. It is kind of interesting. I think, I'd, I think I'm probably going to skip him mostly, but I just think that you're going to get a little lower ownership than we're used to seeing on him. And, and honestly, the, the running backs for the Baltimore situation is really, really tricky. Um, I think Dobbins is really his job. But at the same time, like, Gus Edwards is so cheap. I'm sorry, uh, Mark Ingram is so cheap. And we'll have opportunities, potentially even goal line opportunities. I could even see get that happening with Edwards. So I think I might skip Dobbins and lean towards those guys. What are, you, what are your thoughts on those guys? Now, it's funny because I went back and forth with that exact thing because when I was watching last week, I mean, it seemed to me like exactly what you said, like Dobbins is the main guy. Um, now, what that means with the Baltimore attack is, is, is fishy, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously the main guy, the main running back is Lamar, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm saying the same thing about the Baltimore side is that I, I would only want to play one of them. Um, but just because, again, you're probably playing three of them, right? Like if you're playing two running backs, mm -hmm. you're also splitting your rushing touchdowns with Lamar. So it, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's kind of hard. Now, like you said, though, and I went back and forth because first I was like, okay, I'm just going to take Dobbins, forget Ingram. Then I saw Ingram was 2,600. And then I thought, you know, he's one-third the price of Dobbins. Does he rate to get one-third of the fantasy points? Maybe. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I, think, I, think, it's, I think it's actually pretty efficient. To have him, to have him at 8,200 and the other one at 2,800. So I, I guess what I'm getting at is I kind of agree with you is that which, wherever the ownership discount is, mm -hmm. that's where I'll end up because, like you said, I mean, I think from a points perspective relative to price, they're probably very similar. Mm -hmm. So whichever one comes in lower owned, I may try that. Um, I, I, just, I just feel as though get Edwards is, just get, is more of the, the Dobbins, you know, guy i guess you know what i mean like i think that if dobbins is out that you have a shot for ingram to catch passes whatever mm -hmm. I, I think that if they need to run it in i, I don't know maybe edwards uh, I, I, maybe i'm underestimating him but i i agree with you i think that dobbins is the main guy so i think if i'm going to be underweight to any of those guys it's probably going to be edwards yeah um that makes sense to me and i don't think they're they're going to get edwards and ingram are going to get a ton of attention i just think it's interesting with ingram because while he is not you know, it, he's the, basically sort of the third string if you look at the total touches recently. But he does start the game as the running back. You know what I mean? He's the guy out in the field at the beginning of the game. And if he's out there for the first drive or he breaks one play, we might just immediately have already made up – you might have already gotten there. You know what I mean? So I do like Ingram a little bit, um, especially at low ownership, just because I think that he could – he, he would have – I think that the, the touchdown equity is pretty similar amongst these guys. And Dobbins might, you know – my, of course, he has a little bit higher, but I don't even know that it's three times as high as, as Ingram's is. And especially when you factor in the ownership also at four times the ownership, um, it just makes Ingram, Ingram sort of interesting to me. But in general, I would rather try to play the passing side of this game, and they don't really throw the ball to their running backs much, and it would be Dobbins in that case. So you're playing just the ownership game for me is with, a, with the, using a guy like Ingram, in my opinion. How would you um, – so let's, let's – may as well do the receivers. How, how do you um... – how do you rank – I don't know how do you rank, but how, how, what do you think of the Cleveland receivers? So the Cleveland guys are interesting because they're – I don't think any of them are going to be particularly high owned. I am really interested in Landry just because of all of what he's done lately, especially because if I do believe that Baltimore is going to win this game, you're going to have them throwing the ball from behind, um, which should, should just pepper Landry with a bunch of targets, I think. Um, I think Peoples-Jones is an interesting play. Um, I, I like that uh, – I like that sort of I think he's going to be off the radar a little bit. He had that huge touchdown catch last week. Um, here, I've heard good things about, you know, they like him and all that stuff. To, you know, that always happens after a guy has a good game. But, but even Rashard Higgins is not going to be all that highly known today. So I sort of like the idea of taking a shot on Higgins – I'm sorry, on Peoples-Jones. But if you're going to really get Higgins at around 20%, I think that he's, he's the, the one who stands out. But, I mean, Landry I've got projected at 30% only. So – I'm much more interested in the Cleveland receivers than I am in the Baltimore receivers, I'll tell you that. Um, but I would probably rank them in terms of how they're I – would, I would rank them Landry, Higgins, Peoples-Jones, but Peoples-Jones might be the best tournament play of the three of them. Just 
factoring in price, uh, home run hitting upside. It's not like they're going to, other than Landry, Landry's going to catch a bunch of passes, but they're not going to like, their, their goal is going to be to try and run the ball. They're not going to be out there trying to throw a ton of a time, but they might have to if they're, uh, if they're chasing them late. So that's sort of where I'm going. I'm leaning on uh, mostly, I'll, I'll probably use Peoples Jones just because I just think he'll get overlooked. Um, but I do love Landry also. I don't mind using two of them uh, if you think the game script is going to go. Just make sure you have the game script right if you think Baltimore is going to win the game. Do you have any uh, preference between the two tight ends? The uh, for you mean for for Cleveland? For Cleveland, the joke going with Brian. So uh, I mean, it's interesting because I, I don't know why Bryant is this much higher priced than Joku. At least with Njoku, we've seen him like have games before. They will find him at times near the end zone because he's a big body, a big target. Um, he caught a touchdown against this Baltimore team in the last game uh, that they played this year, uh, early in the season. So I think I would lean Njoku um, just because the 1K does seem like a really solid, really solid price. I don't hate the idea in really long sh- shot GPPs to take a shot on Luke Wilson. Um, but it's, it's, I think I would play Njoku or Wilson – before I play Bryant and Andrews, I'm, I'm again. I'm not seeing a ton of ownership, but I think Andrews is a pretty, pretty solid play. Like I think on a full slate, I would be playing Andrews at tight end. Yeah, I think that uh, you know coming back from uh, from COVID, I, th- I I think that all these guys are ready to, uh, you know, they're they're, they're 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 ready to kill. You know, I, I think Andrews. Is, I I really do think Andrews is going to have a big game. Um, yeah, he's. You know what? I'm. I'm I'm gonna be it's gonna be tough to fade him actually. Yeah. Um, so w- let's go back to um, let's go back to the Baltimore receivers and so 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 Andrews we all agree is a good play. So how so how do you rank now with Andrews back? How does that impact you know, your rankings of the other receivers like Marquise Brown or um, um, or Boykin Duvernay? I, I do, I'm giving everybody a downgrade. Um, the only – like, Marquise Brown is going to be really popular at the price. Of course, he can always break one play and, and be the, the guy. Um, but I'm going to just fade him, I think. I think that's one of my moves is just – I might end up – look, he might end up sneaking into one of my lineups, but mostly my plan is at this price, at this what, – what I think was going to be really heavy ownership, I'm just going to switch it all, play Andrews instead. It's odd to think that Andrews is going to be less owned than Marquise Brown, who literally, you know, hadn't had a game until two weeks ago um, this entire season. Oh, he had one okay game against Cincinnati, I guess, but – uh, so I, I'm leaning the other way. I'm, I'm leaning towards playing uh, Lamar with, with Andrews and not really playing many of the uh, Baltimore receivers. I do think I'll take some shots again on DuVernay. Um, and if Willie Sneed, if, I, if by the end of the day, I think he's going to be lower owned than, than they've got him from, you know, lower than 20%, I'd say, I think I will probably take some shots on him as well. But I think even with these guys back, with, with Sneed and, um, and Andrews back, that DuVernay's going to get snaps? He's, he'll get some snaps anyway because they'll use him for as a potential home run threat. I sort of like the idea of trying to play him like, you know, the old school way. They play him with the defense in case he runs one back because um, uh, he, he's going to do the punt returning and the kickoff returning. But I, I – and I also happen to like the Baltimore defense a lot today. But I think that overall it's mostly going to be Andrew's lineups for me. I don't love any of these guys. Um, and I think fading Marquise Brown is going to be – even look, it might not, I might, it might kill me, but I'm willing to take that shot today. Yeah. So you, you, you touched on something I wanted to talk about, which is, so you have an aggressive Baltimore Ravens defense. You have Baker Mayfield who can go a little wonkers and you have 20 mile hour wins tonight. I think, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, where, where I don't usually like to play defenses and kickers in general, First of all, I think the kickers are very fishy tonight because of the win. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the defenses are very live. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I think that um, um, – uh, I mean, I think the Baltimore defense is going to be probably owned, if you want to know the truth. Um, probably like 20%, I would say. Yeah. I guess. Um, I, I don't know. I think Cleveland's a little – I was about to say I think Cleveland's a little too run-heavy for me to go that crazy. But, but you've seen it, man. If Cleveland gets behind – Yeah. I mean, then, then you can get – you can get two pick success, two pick sixes out of this. So mm-hmm. I do think the Ravens are live. I just I get I, I just feel as though playing defenses against Lamar is just a bad idea. You know, I just I agree with that. I don't like to play Cleveland's defense. Yeah, I mean, I don't even Cleveland, whoever. I mean, they just 
you know, if he's not, doesn't have anything open, he's just going to run, you know? Right. <laughs> so, so, uh, I can't They're going to run the ball end. anyway. Between I'm him gonna, and the running backs, you're going to see 30 rushes probably. This is what I might end up doing. I might end up Xing the Cleveland defense. Just maybe on principle, I might X out the kickers. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, I'll, let, I'll, I'll see where, you know, wherever I script, wherever I get to, I guess, in the Ravens defense, I'll do that. Um, so I guess that's it for, for like, the, the, the auxiliary-type positions. Well, the one, the one other thing is that I really like Justin Tucker in this specific game. Okay. Um, you mentioned the thing. There, are, there is some wind issues and stuff like that, which can be t- difficult sometimes for kickers. They tend to let him kick all over the place. Um, I've seen this, def- this offense for, for Baltimore stall out enough times this season. Justin Tucker has been not – I mean, like, this has been a kind of a – he actually missed the field goal that was 40 yards for, like, the first time in, like, five years the other day. Yeah. Um, but he seems cheap enough to where I think he can get you, you know, 10 points, 12 points, and that would be totally fine if we would do that from a player. And I think it's, I think it's got a real possibility. I think you might see it, you know, look, you're talking about a couple field goals and a few extra points. That's good enough for us. And he can kick it from, you know, 60 yards out and get the bonus points. So I, li- I like Justin Tucker, sort of the Ravens defense. And if you wanted to go really low with everything, you could play all the, those guys with DuVernay and just have a completely, I mean, nobody's going to play that. You could spend that at every other spot. Um, so that's sort of one way I'm thinking about leaving. Um, who do you like more, Duvernay or Boykin? Duvernay is a better upside play. Okay. And he'll be low, he'll be higher owned, but Boykin, uh, I would sneed back. I think will he might even be on the field like more, but they really don't look his way very often when they have everybody. Duvernay, I think they still have they, – they, they want to get this kid going. I think they might, they might take some shots with him. Um, hasn't really paid off yet this year exactly. But at, at 1,600, I think he's reasonable. I don't think you need to necessarily go there. I do, and I think of, of all the guys of the, that are the best plays, I think that at 1K, uh, Njoku probably makes the most sense of the cheap guys. I think, he, I think Njoku is probably a slightly better play than Duvernay. Um, do, do you ever have I mean, rules or guidelines or whatever when it comes to – um, uh, lineups with like five of one team and one of the other? So I think this depends on the slate. I absolutely like to have, like I, I would want for, I'm going to try and have, you know, mostly four Ravens would be my, my main build today. I might have some with five. Um, I, I think there's a chance they could smash this team. But uh, I think that in general, like, I mean, it's, it really is slate dependent for me. There's some days where, in general, four twos seem to be the – I think they're the most winning by, by a pretty good margin. But there have been some five ones that have won everything. So mostly I try to get to, I try to, get to a four two and build it out the way I think the game strip would go. So, like, right now my first build would be, you know, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, Justin Tucker, Ravens defense. And then I can play one of the running backs from Cleveland and one of the receivers from Cleveland would be my first thought. Yeah. Right. Now, the um, – because, I mean, what I, what I was kind of fiddling around with is if you're going to play five from one side and one from the other – would you ever play like say five Cle- four Cleveland guys or five Clevelands, but then like put Lamar in the captain or something like that? Um, right. Or is that bad? You know what I mean? Or, or do no, I don't. I think this would be the time where it would make some sense actually, because you could see all. I mean, there's a chance that that Lamar rushes for two touchdowns. Maybe he throws for another one, and the guy only has like nine fantasy points, wherever he throws it to. Um, and then you have the you get Cleveland who gets all the PPR points coming from behind and also the running back points. Um, so I, I sort of like that. I also I also do think Mark Andrews is a very very viable play in the captain spot tonight. I really like him actually. Now, do you like when I, when I when I think about the captain spot, I look for one of two things. One is 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 the person have a legitimate chance of actually being the highest scoring player on the slate, right? Because Ooh. that's obviously a really really important. But the other or, – or the other thing is if the guy is so freaking cheap that right. he just lets you get all these dudes that are just really necessary. Right. Um, like that's so, – so, for example, last night I played, I played two lineups in the showdown. And I thought I was going to be in business because I, I play I James Washington and the captain in one. And right off the bat, you know, he gets a touchdown pretty quickly. Um, or not right off the bat, but when they were – you know, he got their first touchdown. And then my other one was Ray Ray McLeod because it was the only way you could fit everybody else in. So I actually had a zero from Ray Ray McLeod in my, in one of my lineups as my captain. And I, that lineup cashed in like the top 5% because I had all the other plays that did everything, but because I used somebody so cheap in the captain. 
So like for, for, for just like for example, right? This is literally just for, 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 en for entertainment purposes only, right? So if you put Duvernay in the captain, just, just to show you what you could do. Yeah. So then and you could play Lamar and then you do this, like literally who do you want to play? So you can play. Do you mind calling your screen up just so I can see it? Oh, I'm supposed to be sharing right now. No, oh, so that's uh, weird. Oh, that was the old meeting? Oh, okay, sorry. No, no worries. Oh, uh, so like here, you could put Duvernay up in the captain and then you could play um, everything. Well, not, you, you could play this, you could then play Hunt, for example. And yeah. play the whole, all the passing games. You can play Hunt, Baker, and then um, Landry. Higgins and Landry, like for example. Um, and so what that doesn't let you do is play Chubb, but whatever. This leaves 3,000 on the table. I mean, you could play Chubb if you wanted to, right? Yeah. So, so this one leaves 3,000 on the table, which satisfies goal number one, right? Uh, leave money on the table. And so, this, so doing this, you put a guy in the captain – who's not going to win the slate, but he's going to put the other guys in, in, in play. Mm -hmm. So again, that, that's the way I think of the captain is, that's right. Is, is, is what is either have a guy that's going to win the slate or have a guy that's going to make the, the rest of it kind of, you know, easier to deal with. Well, put. I, that's, I totally agree. And I'm not, I just want to say in general, I never ever say play kickers as captains and I don't think tonight is quite the time to do it. I don't usually play click pickers on the showdown sites either, but I really do think if they ever have a guy, it's it's Justin Tucker in certain spots will will have those fifteen fantasy point games, and he's. Really but you can't. But you can't. Play, but you can't play him with the um with the other skill guys, though, right? What do you mean? I mean, because if he's going to score like field goals, and the other guys are not getting touched. Yeah, so you would have Lamar to Andrews, let's say, because he's still going to get touches. Andrews is still going to catch, you know, six passes okay. or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, right. But, it, but you may not get, maybe he won't, won't get in the end zone, or maybe he only gets in once. You still get Justin Tucker for, you know, three field goals plus. I mean, he's got, Justin Tucker feels like a very safe bet to get around double-digit points tonight. So I sort of like the idea of almost locking him in, which is I never feel about kickers. I never, ever feel this way. But I feel really strongly about Justin Tucker. And I, I need to take a look at exactly which ways the wind's blowing and everything like that. But as of right now, he's, he's a guy who I have very high on my list. I really like the Ravens' defense, too. Um, so Tucker with the Ravens defense, Lamar and uh, Andrews is sort of my core. All right, I think we've given them enough to uh, enough to go right. on. Yeah, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 get after it. We got um, we got we got to think about uh, how often we want to do NBA. And then uh, there's a lot 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 going on. Hey, I'll be doing it every day as long as you're there, and I would love it every time you're there with me because I'm I'm ready, man. I'm so pumped about the season. Hey, fire it up! I'm ready to go now. All right, let's do it, buddy. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, once we get the NBA stuff going, we'll, it'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys. Um, thanks to Sheets. Uh, as always, everybody out there, we hope we were helpful. And, uh, yeah, hit us up on Twitter and give us the like and subscribe, and we will see you at the top of the leaderboards.